The J7E is a jet that once upon a time I considered to be the best top tier in all of War Thunder. Things have changed since then, it's not even a top tier jet anymore, but at 11.0 BR it is probably, well in my opinion it's definitely going to be the best jet at the BR by a long shot. Flight performance wise pretty much nothing comes close. The missiles are still super, super powerful and very meta, at, at least if you ask me. But the main thing about the J7, for whatever reason, at 11.0, is that it's constantly getting down tiered into 10.0 and 10.3 Premiumville. This is just my experience, so if you get a different experience in the J7, don't come complaining to me that you're not getting as many down tiers. But if I had to put a number on it, I would say that 8 out of 10 of my matches are down tiers into 10.0 or 10.3 matchmaker, and I'm not even exaggerating. I know it's not like this for most 11.0s, but for some reason China 11.0 right now is just constantly getting down tiered into F5Cs and A10s, and you basically just get to farm them for free all day long with PL5s and be untouchable and quite frankly an, F an F22 UFO in comparison to the competition as far as flight performance goes. I think this plane could obviously easily be 11.3, but even at 11.7 I don't think that the J70 would completely suck. Point is that at 11.0 I think it's pretty under tiered, but I'm not complaining because PL5s are still probably my favorite missile to use in War Thunder. They're just super, super meta. I don't know, well I do know what it is, just the overall acceleration of the missile, the pool, the close range performance because of how much you can lead it and then the very little reaction time that you give your target. Uh, the short motor burn time so that they don't even know it's coming. Oh yeah, by the way the PL5 was not affected too heavily by the drag nurse to all the missiles. It still has a on the deck supersonic range of probably about 3.2 uh, kilometers, 3.4 maybe if you're lucky. but. Uh, from there it only gets better you know if you're higher altitude you can still hit your four or five kilometer shots and if people are flying slightly towards you you could even throw them all the way out to five six if they're kind of flying at a side aspect to you point is the pl5 despite not burning very long still has extremely far range and it's in the air and going pretty damn fast for a long time without your target even knowing that it's flying toward it. And that's why it is so lethal and so effective in my in, in my opinion and in my experience. Here is a, of course it's a cherry pick game of me in a high kill game in a full down tier facing a bunch of premiums that probably just started playing this game a week ago. I completely get that, but you're just gonna have to trust me when I tell you that 4 and 5 kill games in the J7 for me lately has been pretty usual. And that's not saying a whole lot when you look at the type of matches that I'm actually getting. Again, FICs and A10s all day long, these players probably started playing a week ago, literally, and it's really not that difficult to get high kill games when you're flying something that is objectively better than their planes in every single metric by a very large margin. And then of course your weapons are a lot better too. Combine that with the fact they have no idea what they're doing and you're gonna be also probably getting aces pretty regularly if you start playing this plane right now. Who knows, maybe a week or two from now, Anyways, maybe a week or two from now, you might not be getting the same luck that I'm that I'm getting. Like I said, most of this is just the lucky matchmaker that for some reason China 11.0 is getting, and I think it's pretty consistent. So I'm gonna say it's a thing right now, but who knows how long that's actually gonna last. So I think if you have the J7, now is a fantastic time to play it. I highly recommend it. Even if, when you get into full 12.0, 12.0 up tiers, it still can hold its own and you're only going to be facing four uh, 12.0s in a single match. I'm pretty sure that's all I ever see, so it, it can still compete. Going into the gameplay here, I've got a Mirage 3E teammate, and he's in a world of trouble, as we are pretty much the last people alive. There's an A5C on my team still somewhere, but there's like three or four F5Cs swarming this guy, as well as a MiG-21 Bis. Uh, I'm just kind of going after whoever is going after him because I want to keep him alive. If he dies, then everyone on the enemy team is going to be focusing me, and it doesn't matter how good you are, when you're in a 1 versus 5 with F5Cs and they're just swarming you, there's probably not a whole lot you're going to do unless they really, really sell the game. So, again, I'm kind of just bouncing between targets, trying to 
keep off what I can from him, but now this MiG-20 Abyss is on me, and the J7 is just flat out superior. It's a MiG-20 Abyss, but better in every single way. So I'm just going to bleed off his energy in this vertical here, and then come back around on him. I'm just toggling flaps to get as much turn as I can. He's basically falling out of the sky at this point, so... He's spiraling down with me, but I'm always going to end up winning this kind of fight. And eventually he's going to figure that out. So he's just going to kind of take off and fly away here, which is the correct thing to do. But unfortunately, that just means that it's going to delay this fight and draw it out even longer. I'm only on five minutes of fuel. I need to land. And it looks like my teammate is also now leaving me. However, it looks like this F5C over here also needs to land. Judging by his behavior, he's pretty slow. He's flying away from my teammate. I'm assuming he's probably low fuel and needs to RTB, so I push a little cheeky head on here. Didn't really plan on killing him, but that forces me into a pretty good merging position. We're pretty much both 12 o'clock on each other since we took that head on. And now I'm just going to focus him down. I know that the MiG-21 bis behind me, I don't think he has missiles because he'd have shot some at me by now. So I'm not really focused about missiles, but I am going to flare once in a while without looking at him just in case as I try to focus the F5C. Basically, I'm just trying to get rid of as many guns that could shoot at me as quickly as I can. And if you're doing that, you can't be trying to juggle around three targets all day. So eventually you have to pick a target and commit to it. And since the F5C has presented himself as the weaker target in this situation, he's who I picked. And so once again, I know the MiG-20 Abyss is flying away. It's going to take him a second to get to get back over here to help his F5C. So I'm just going to full send. Air break this guy, get onto a 6, shoot him, he's on fire, and now I'm just going to worry about the MiG-21. And I've got this nice terrain here I can use to kind of dip down. If he goes for an actual shot on me, he'd probably end up crashing. That's why I did that specific move right there. Because, one, it's a hard shot to hit, he's going really fast, and I'm low. And again, if he commits that shot, he's really risking crashing right there. So... With the speed I was at, considering how hard I committed to killing that F5, that was pretty much my only option right there, and I'm just thankful that it paid off. That's like one out of three F5Cs dead, maybe one out of four. I think there's, I don't know, two or three left at this point. So after I killed that F5, I just kind of went back to base. The MiG-21, I think, also went back to base. And so I've taken off at this point. My Mirage has already been in the air for a little bit. And as I get back to the battlefield to help the Mirage, <laughs> That F5C was just shooting ground targets and he was completely oblivious to the fact I was right next to him, even though I was, again, right next to him. And so it's a free missile kill. And that just leaves this F5C, another F5C, and a MiG-21. But unbeknownst to me, because I haven't checked the scoreboard in a while, I didn't know there was actually another F5C. And so I'm looking at my teammate here thinking, man, you got to not fly him straight towards me. That's not going to help me save you at all. But he actually ends up saving me by telling me that there's a missile on my 6. Huge call out by him. Appreciate you, man. You're pretty much the only reason that I stayed alive this game because I had Well, I don't know for sure I'd have ate that missile because it kind of sounded like it was kind of just gliding behind me out of energy, but more than likely I'd have eaten that missile. And so I survive. Now we're in a dogfight. Two versus three. It's kind of more two versus two because the A5C is not really helping. The A5C decides he doesn't want to dodge my guns at all or maneuver in any kind of defensive manner. So that's a pretty free shot. Although my aim has been struggling lately since I haven't been playing too much. Luckily we hit that one. And then it's just this guy who's chasing the, F the A5C. I have one more PL5 left so I say, what the hell? I think he's the last guy because I've forgotten about the MiG-21 Abyss. He flares it. Now I'm out of missiles. But... Again, I thought it was the last guy until I checked the scoreboard right there and realized I've made a chronic miscalculation. <laughs> and so we just kind of air brake and slow down with him as he loses all of his speed right there. Get one hit into him and it didn't look like it was that critical, but there he is flat spinning. So it must have been pretty serious. And then we just kind of dump all of our speed and go for the finishing shot because I'm like, there's nobody else in the area. I will be completely safe. Once again, completely forgetting about the MiG-21. That is definitely still in this match. And probably, if I'd have done this 15 seconds later, would have ended up just missling me. But thankfully, the MiG-21 is going after somebody else right now. This very moment, actually. I think he's going after somebody else, and I just haven't noticed him that. Noticed him yet. There he is. And so I get to turn around here. Try to build up some speed. He's flying the other way. I'm not really concerned at this point. I definitely could have been in a bad scenario right there but it turned out in my favor so now I just fly fly toward him chase him hopefully that he goes after hopefully he goes after the Mirage 3E teammate and that looks like that's what he's doing 
I don't know why exactly. I was a very vulnerable target for him, but again, he's a premium player. Probably picked up the game like a week ago, and so I'm just going to go up there and clean him up. Again, the MiG-21 Miss doesn't really stand a chance against the J-70 because the J-70 is just a better MiG-21 Miss, essentially. So we take our time, just kind of slot onto a 6 here. He dumps all of his speed trying to turn, as a MiG-21 Miss does, makes it a pretty easy shot. And that's the game with a 9 kill game. 9 kill games don't happen all the time. This one's in here for entertainment, but again, with the current matchmaker for the J70, a 4-5 kill game is not uncommon for me right now. And it's a lot of fun. If you want to just de-stress and shoot some bots, aka premium players at 10.0, I think it's a lot of fun, and you'll probably enjoy it. However, as I said earlier in the video, it can hold its own in a 12.0 match. This is a 12.0 match, and I am going to be throwing this thing straight into the furball just to see what it can do. I'm not going to get a lot of kills this game, I'll be the first to tell you that, but the whole point is just, you don't have to eat these top tier missiles. You know, the 27ER is scary, the 7M is scary, the Phoenix is annoying, but you don't have to just put yourself in a position that leaves you vulnerable. If you just stay on the deck the whole time, and stay low enough to where those radar missiles literally just don't work, then you just kind of fly around the furball and not really have to worry about much. Sure, if somebody aggro's on tier 6, that's going to be pretty annoying, but the J7's good enough flight performance to where you can usually get pretty much everything off you, and if not, you can defensive fly long enough to where somebody on your team is inevitably going to be killing somebody that aggro's that hard on tier 6. And this is how top tier 12.0 is won. What you're seeing directly on screen right now. Notice the massive furball from both teams. Who do you think is going to win this game? That's right, it's the team that wins this furball right now. Thank God we got bigger maps. I really appreciate you guys begging for this. It's really added a lot to the gameplay. And surely these furballs don't happen as often anymore. And if they do, thankfully they don't decide the impact of the game anymore. I'm of course being sarcastic because literally every single match at top tier is decided by a furball. Sure, the game lasts longer, but the game is decided by the furball still. You can see the enemy team has nowhere close to the amount of numbers that my team does, and it just, they've lost at this point. The game's gonna go on for another 5 minutes, 10 minutes, but like I said, they don't have the numbers, they're never gonna be able to compete, and now at this point we just have to go clean them up in 5 versus 1 situations. So I see this tornado right here, and I'm like, you know what, it's a tornado, he's a hot target, I'm just going to try to throw this 1PL5 because I really don't see myself doing too much else this game. Unfortunately for me, he ends up seeing it and flaring it, and the PL5 is not particularly flare resistant as pretty much no missile is anymore, so yeah, that eats the flares. In a couple of seconds, I see a MiG-29 off to my right, and he's in a fight with somebody, so I'm like, you know what? I want some of that. I want to put the J70 against a MiG-29 because, well, it'd be a challenge and it'd be pretty fun. Don't get me wrong, the MiG-29 absolutely clears the J7 in a dogfight, but it's not... I say clears, the J7 has a pretty small chance. There's something it can do in a duel. And if you're a pretty experienced player versus somebody that has absolutely no idea what they're doing in a one versus one, you probably can beat most of the average top tier MiG-29 and F-16 players despite being technically the worst plane in flight performance. That was kind of my mindset going into this, so I'm like, what the hell, I'll take the 1v1. The J7 is still good enough to where I can probably exploit some things to my advantage. So I want to take a clean look and merge, make this fight look cool for the camera. I'm going to slow myself down a little bit, but still keep enough speed to where I'm still, you know, able to defend myself. But unfortunately, as I go for this epic, uh, kind of one circle, rolling scissors type thing, I don't, even, I don't know what you call this, I'm trying to pull inside of the MiG-29, which the J7 can do, but not if you rip your flaps off. And it also extremely depends on the fuel load you're running, so I'm, I was thinking I was low enough fuel, probably, but then if you rip your flaps off, it is all over. So I'm pretty, pretty lucky, pretty thankful that that F4S just ended up wiping him, which is what was going to happen regardless, because our team was just slamming them. But, you know, it's just good to see. So in summary, if you get a 12.0 game in the J7, it's not going to be often. Like I said, most of, most of the time you're probably going to be getting like aces and 10.3 premium build. But if you do get that unlucky 12.0 game, don't stress too hard about it, just stay low. If you're right above the ground, SARS ain't gonna be hitting you. And the flight performance combined with PL5s is definitely still going to present you with some opportunities to kill some of these new jets. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I will be seeing you later.